uh, a lesson on snowflakes, and it's on paper snowflakes. And we're going to be folding our papers to create these awesome snowflake crystals. And if you look here, this is a real snowflake crystal. Snowflakes are so amazing. I'm going to show you some more snowflake crystals. And the, the snowflake crystals are actually an, a radial design in nature. Look how cool that is. A radial design is a design that starts in the center, and then it repeats in a circular motion from the center. So it repeats out the center. It radiates out from a center point and repeats same, 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 all around. Uh, there's a man named Snowflake Bentley, and that was in the 1800s he lived, and he wanted to share beautiful snowflakes with everybody. So he figured out how to photograph some snowflakes. Here's some snowflakes that S Snowflake Bentley photographed right here. Aren't they cool? These are the first photographs ever of snow. When I was a girl in New Hampshire, I always thought they were so beautiful. And Snowflake Bentley actually lived in Vermont, not too far from me in New Hampshire. And uh, our snowflakes were just amazing back then, up there, up there in New Hampshire. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and do a snowflake today. And our first step is to take a piece of paper that's made into a square. You want a perfect square. And we're going to do a book fold. I'm folding one edge to the other right here. And we're trying to figure out how to make these a radial design. So we're going to be making cuts after in this fold. So I'm going to fold it in half like a book. Then I take my bottom, fold the bottom, so now it's a rectangle, fold the bottom up to meet the top. And I'm going to really push hard on the fold edges so it makes a nice crisp fold. Then I have now a square again, but it's much smaller. I'm going to turn my square to the side so it looks like a diamond. And one of the points should face towards your tummy. Now, you want the sides that open up. Just check your top and see, is there all the parts that open up facing the top? If the parts are like this and they don't open up, there's only two pieces of paper. Turn it. There's only one. There's none, only one that open. Turn it so that all the folds face up. See the ones are all the open parts. So this is paper that has no opening. See how I see how it's all uh, the actual piece of paper and no folds. So I've got four. One, two, three, four. And that is important. It needs to face up. Then I'm gonna have the diamond part face down. And I'm gonna fold this this side to this side. So I'm going to do a book fold and have it go on the center here. So I'm going to fold, bringing my corners to the other side. So let's think about that as I'm, as I'm doing this. All of my open parts are up. There's four pieces of paper here. And then I'm going to bring one side over. Okay. So this corner, I'm going to hold the bottom over. This is the hardest fold to make and it touches the other side and then you crease this really good okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut on all four sides and when you cut with your scissors you're not using the tips of the scissors look if I just use the tips sometimes cutting through lots of paper it just bends the paper it doesn't cut well so I want to open up my scissors and I'm gonna use the power part of the scissor I call it way up in here and this is the part that will help me cut through four layers and six layers and eight layers of paper. So many layers. So I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to make a slice in. Now some kids make little tiny slices. Make a pretty good slice in. And then I'm taking out a big chunk. So if I make another slice in, then I've got to meet both so that one piece falls off. So it actually falls. So I'm going to be making a cut in each side. I can do straight cuts. I just want to make sure I don't cut all the way through. But I want to come into this area somewhat. And now I want to make a cut into this side. I can do it diagonal, and I can turn and do it diagonal again and make a triangular cut. Or I can make a very curvy cut. You know, you're making up any kind of curve, shape, or cut. Now, if you open it up, you'll see this will be a very simple snowflake. So I can open it up carefully 
and it's going to form some cuts and holes. This is we're just checking at this point. We're checking to see what's going on. Now, as an artist, I can say, "Wow, that might be cool." Or I can make my snowflake smaller and more detailed. So just carefully fold it back up. Now, I've only done one cut on each side so far. Okay? This is kind of checking your work. I can then do some other smaller cuts. I did one big cut on each side. Now, I'm pretty much doing some slices. And I'm doing what's called a double cut. I've cut in here once. Okay? Let me see. I cut in once, now I'm going to cut off of that cut. Watch. I'm making a little tiny cut off of this big cut. See that? I'm going to do again on this row. You want to make sure that you leave some pretty good thickness though when you're doing your cuts. You don't want to get too crazy with cuts. You want it to be as, as wide as your scissors. Look at that. If I made this any skinnier, this might fall apart. Okay. So I don't want to go closer to my any closer to the next cut. But I'm going to add some really cool, I can even cut some of the corners off if I want on some of them. The more little cuts you make and the more that you take away from your snowflake, first of all, the, the, the more delicate it becomes, but also the more intricate and detailed. I like gluing these after I'm done onto paper. It makes it beautiful. So I'm making some smaller cuts here after I've made my big cuts. Then when you open this thing up, the snowflake, I'm going to do one more cut up here because I kind of like this shape here. Now, when you open it up, you want to put your garbage in the garbage can, then slowly and carefully open this up because now it's become very delicate. And you can always change it if you don't like it by refolding it. And you'll end up with some really cool designs. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Oh my God. But let me tell you what. To see a real snowflake, this is what's amazing. So if you ever get a chance to go see one, make sure that when it hits your hand or mitten, you look closely at it to see the beautiful branching designs. Now... What's fun, let me show you some other examples. Just like no two real snowflakes are alike, as you cut your paper, no one will have the same snowflakes either. More or less. This is kind of a cool looking design here. So if you want to achieve that, when you get to your, when you're cutting, you're cutting some, I'll show you here when I fold it back up. These designs are made by making just a little long, narrow slice coming out. See it? That's how you make these cool kind of stripes on the crystal. That's really cool. And then what's even fun, look, if you have time, you can take some small scrap papers and make little mini snowflakes right there. So you can have fun doing your own simple paper snowflakes.